So the presentation is about capabilities, capability-based planning, business capabilities. But let's start with that, that question of why is this useful? Why is this a good idea? I would say the most important thing about capabilities is that they sit in the middle between, on the one hand, your strategy here at the top, where do you want to take your company? Then your business model, how do you make money? Or if you're, say, a government agency, how do you serve your citizens? And your operating model, the more practical side of things, what, your, what are your, your resources, your value streams, your processes, uh, et cetera? How, how do you uh, get things organized? And capabilities are a very useful concept to link these things together. Uh, and that's why they have become really popular over the, over the last uh, 20 years or so in, increasingly, but they have a much longer history uh, as a concept. But it's a really useful concept. Very important to understand is that a capability is about what an enterprise does or what it can do, but not about who is doing it, how you're doing it, what, why you're doing it. It's, it's the what, not the how. So a capability is not a business unit. It's not a team. It's not a group of people. And if you show a capability map to somebody in management, the, one of the first impulses is that they go with their finger on the map and say, oh, this is mine. This is my team, my department. But that's wrong. That's not what a capability is. It's also not a business process. It's not a sequence of activities, things you do one after another. It's definitely not, definitely not an IT system or what an IT system does. Uh, of course, IT systems contribute to the business and what they do contributes to your business capabilities. But a capability is not a system. And it's also not a physical asset. Um, and if you're, for example, working in the defense space, you'll see that the term capability is used a lot there, sometimes in the sense of what an enterprise or an organization does, but sometimes also in that physical sense. I've, I've heard uh, aircraft carriers refer to as capabilities, which is really not what they wanted to say. An aircraft carrier provides you with a capability, something like force projection or whatever you want to call it, but the physical asset is not the capability. So that's important. What is it not? What's also important is that capabilities are not um, architecture thingies. They are, let's say, owned by the business. The business should, should provide your, you with the definitions. And when I say the business, that's already kind of IT speak for the rest of the organization, not in IT. So let's, let's, let's avoid that. But it is really about um, what is an organization, an enterprise, a business doing? And what's also relevant is that capabilities are unique. You have a capability or you don't. You don't have it three times. You might have it implemented in three different ways in three different uh, parts of the organization, but you have it or you don't. So it's in that sense unique. And capabilities are relatively stable. Over time, you see that organizations keep much of the same capability. Take, say, an insurance company. A hundred years ago, an insurance company will have had much of the same capabilities as today. They will have changed their implementation since digitization, etc. Of course, that has a huge impact on how you do the, the work, but what you do, so the capabilities, is relatively stable. So why do you want to use capabilities? Well, they give you that shared vocabulary to talk to the business, but all kinds of people in the business um, will understand that, that, that terminology. Um, it's also a way to see what's common across your, your enterprise because they provide that broad spectrum view and uh, uh, they are a good way to, to see these commonalities. It's also very useful to focus on capabilities as a way of deciding where you need to invest, which capabilities need to be improved, which capabilities are strategically important, which are maybe less important, commodities, etc. And we will get to these topics later on in this presentation. And given that they are a good vehicle for, for focusing your investments, they are also very useful for strategic planning. Which capabilities to improve, when, how, what's the, 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 the change planning behind that, etc. And in that way, they are the basis for, for designing transformations uh, in your enterprise. Now, my presentation will focus mostly on the first parts of our capability-based planning process, which is the mapping and assessment of capabilities, not so much on the planning and control steps. So not, not really on how do you then plan your capability changes. That might be something for another presentation at another time. Uh, I will focus on the first two bubbles of this, this picture, uh, in this uh, in this story, so about how do you identify your capabilities, map them out, and assess them as a basis for that change planning. That planning itself, that's something for another time. 